So today I'm gonna to talk about the darkening of the Greenland ice sheet. And this I'm showing you here is what we captured from a drone footage three years ago in the field. And to some, this image would be considered breathtaking. Yet, as a climate scientist, this is really frightening to me. This map shows the most recent analysis by NASA of global average temperatures on Earth from 2013 to 2017. The yellows, oranges, and reds represent warmer temperatures. And so, if we zoom into the Arctic, what we see is that the Arctic is getting warmer. And science tells us that something is happening in Greenland. As a scientist, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. My colleagues and I are trying to find out what exactly is going on. And the results have surprised us. At the macro scale, we can see that the Greenland ice sheet is white and a bright surface. But what we've found is that Greenland has many colors to it, and that the surface in recent years has been darkening as represented by this gray filter here. And so evidence shows us that Greenland is losing water and ice annually at an unprecedented rate. And that here we see that the mass loss of the Greenland ice sheet from 2002 until present is at a rate of 286 gigatons per year. So how much is 286 gigatons? Well, it turns out to be the length of one US presidential term. If we're thinking about it in terms of discharge or outflow from the Niagara Falls. And so what does this amount of loss actually look like? If we were to completely melt the Greenland ice sheet today, we would add seven meters of sea level rise. And what that means is if we consider Washington DC where the average elevation is two meters, the National Mall here would be underwater. This very building that you're sitting in, this room that you're sitting in, we would require a boat and helicopter assistance from the State Department to evacuate. And so today I want to talk about this term albedo. Albedo, which is how white and bright the surface is on the Greenland ice sheet, is a primary variable for determining the acceleration of melt on the ice sheet and the darkening of the ice surface. And so again, albedo is the measure of how white the ice surface is, and that Albedo is size scale dependent, right? So if we look at this image here, we can see higher albedo over the snow surfaces, right? It's a brighter surface. And we see lower albedo over the darker debris rich surfaces. And so when we study Greenland and Greenland albedo, we need to consider both the small and the large scale. And so albedo comes from the Latin word whiteness. Again, it's how white the ice surface is. And so it is a term used to describe how bright a surface or a material effectively reflects the light's energy from the sun. And so on the left, what we see is a situation where we have high albedo, a bright surface where, say, 80% of incoming light bounces off the ice surface. And if we darken that surface, what we have on the left side is what we call low albedo, right? So maybe 10% of that incoming light would be reflected. And so this is what albedo, the process of albedo looks like up close. Yes, the ice can be white, but as we start to warm the air temperature, the ambient air temperature, what happens is we go from a color of white to a silvery white and then something that looks quite dark. And so this self-reinforcing process is a key variable for determining 
Greenland ice sheet melt. And so again, at the macro scale, we can see that Greenland is a bright white surface. But I'm using this gray filter here to kind of represent the dimming or the darkening of the Greenland ice sheet. And so in the following slides, I'm going to talk about several of the processes and different mechanisms that occur on the ice sheet related to a darkening surface. So the first process is metamorphosis. I'm referring to metamorphosis that occurs in snow layers and ice layers. And this process is capable of lowering and darkening the ice surface. And so here what we see is a microscopic view of a snowflake from, collected from an electron micrograph. In the left image, we see a freshly fallen snow grain. It has distinct facets, and it's able to reflect light effectively away. But then say we start to introduce warmer temperatures. What happens is we get an image such as on the right where the individual crystals begin to start to smooth out. They round out the edges, and they start to stick together. And when that happens, you start to lower the albedo of a snowpack. Another contributor to the darkening of the ice sheet is the color of the ice sheet. So consider snow and ice surfaces. In this image here, what I'm showing you, and in the upcoming slides, I'm going to show you different varieties of algae, living bacteria, on the snow and on the ice in Greenland that are capable of producing different colors and different albedos. And so here, this is an algae that's producing a green hue, shades of green, on a snowpack. We also have algae that can color the snow pink and red. And the ice can also, from the algae, be colored brown. And so if we look at these algae at the microscopic scale, we can see that the algae comes in many different shapes and sizes. And that those differences result in different surface expressions on the ice sheet. And so currently, the scientific community is trying to understand what is the role that algae plays for regulating the albedo and the darkening of the ice sheet. A third contributor is a surface that I call pooling, right? So pooling of water on the ice surface. If we think of this, that we're in the lower elevations of the Greenland ice sheet, in the summertime, we have snow that melts off as the temperature rises, and that exposes the bare glacier ice underneath. And as that ice becomes exposed, debris starts to accumulate, and the ice darkens. The other process that occurs is water starts to melt, right? The hydrologic system starts to activate. The water starts to pool, as shown in the bottom left-hand corner of this image. And so some of that meltwater pools in these topographic depressions on the ice sheet and are called melt ponds. And these are these brilliant blue lakes that we see from a satellite image captured by NASA. And so these meltwater lakes can lower the albedo of the ice sheet, and it can do so over sizable areas of the ice surface. The final element that I want to cover is what I call texturing, right? The patterns and the variations, the different surface types that occur on the ice surface are another element that can create roughness and texture that contributes to the darkening of the Greenland ice sheet. And so here is an example of a debris-rich ice surface. Here it's comprised of soot and dust that may have been wind-blown or deposited onto the ice surface. And this dust can also originate from within the ice sheet itself. So it's a melting out of ancient ice, releasing these debris and accumulating on the ice surface. The other thing that we can notice from this image is that the debris is not uniform across space. And so again, this, this patterning and this spatial distribution of the dust 
is another way that we can look at and say that that impacts the albedo of the ice sheet. And then finally, I want to introduce you to these criconite holes. These criconite holes are features, they're water-filled holes with a black sludge underneath. And that black sludge is what we call criconite. And the criconite is comprised of dust and soot and living bacteria. And within it, at a micro scale, there's melting occurring. But if you think about in the summertime on the ice sheet, if those continue to populate and to grow, they can start to have a cumulative effect and actually impact the total albedo of the ice sheet. And so finally, I want to leave you with this. This is some of the field work that my, my colleagues and I are conducting on the Greenland ice sheet. This is drone footage showing us trying to map out the river networks on the Greenland ice sheet, trying to determine how much of that liquid meltwater is being routed to the surrounding oceans. So we're truly trying to quantify how much is being added to sea level rise. And so given the crucial processes that I've introduced to you here today related to albedo, the feedbacks, it's a complex nonlinear system, we can start to think that all of these processes, those four processes that I introduced, can affect the total albedo of the ice sheet, and therefore it affects the melting and the sea level rise. And so as scientists right now, we're trying to understand how these processes interplay with one another and how the feedbacks uh, occur. And so I'm going to leave a question with you now. And the question is, what does albedo and the darkening of the Greenland ice sheet mean for our future? Thank you. Thank you.